thanks for joining me here uh, for this COVID-19 update. It's been a while since we've all uh, been out of the building and been able to hold a press briefing in person, so I'm grateful that you're all here. We're here tonight at Toscana Little Italy in San Marco to highlight a business that's doing things right, reopening in a smart and safe way. I have to say that so I've been eating at this restaurant for many years, my family and I have. Um, we've had birthday celebrations here, family events, friends, friend events, and when the, when the pandemic started early in the process, I was here early getting takeout one night, and Rebecca was just sharing with me uh, about the stress, uh, the risk to employees, the risk to the business, the month, the, you know, the business that they had built, and uh, just tremendous risk. So it really, really shaped my sense of urgency to understand the small businesses that we're going to really need the bridge relief help that we partnership with Vistar. Uh, when you hear the stories uh, up close and personal and see the stress, you understand that a lot of people have had a very, very difficult time in this city, both, biz both business owners and, and people that have frankly lost their jobs. Thanks to owner Rebecca Winchester for allowing us to highlight your business and host this news conference here tonight. We're two weeks into a gradual reopening of our economy, which started with restaurants and retail at 25% capacity. Guys revving his engine for TV. And it was expanded to 50% capacity by Governor DeSantis starting today. Toscana is a great example of a business that is reopening responsibly. They're adhering to the 50% capacity limit for their indoor dining and have expanded their outdoor options in cooperation with their landlord, Tony Slamman. I think Tony's here. I heard Tony was here. Hey, Tony, thank you. They're practicing social distancing, sanitation, and other measures are in place. This outdoor dining takes advantage of the relaxed enforcement of the zoning code related to outdoor restaurant and retail activity I announced last week. Rebecca, thank you for reopening your restaurant in a safe and responsible way for your customers, employees, and our entire community. So, please, it's yours. Thank you, Mayor, very much for this opportunity. I'm here at the Toscana family. We're both honored and humbled by your presence here and for you acknowledging our measures that we've taken. Been a tough road the past couple of months, weeks, it's months now, I think. Um, but we have done everything we can to be safe um, for not only the safety of our customers, but also the safety of our employees, our, our extended family. Um, we have put in measures in place to make sure that uh, our employees have all been trained um, to adhere to the highest levels of the CDC recommendations as well as the local health department regulations. We've also uh, enacted a lot of social distancing in our restaurant, meaning that we are at every six feet on the, on the table, so nobody is sitting on top of each other. We are making sure that all of our front of house staff is masked and gloved for your protection and as well as theirs. We also have put in major sanitation uh, guidelines of how to clean the tables and also eating utensils and plates per, again, the CDC and Health Department guidelines. Um, we are doing everything we can to make this a, a responsible opening and we hope to set an example for everybody um, and to obviously share any information that we have going forward. Um, again, we've done everything we can and We'll be happy to accommodate any kind of wish. We have, as I said, I'd like to thank the Slayman uh, group because they have allowed us to allow this outside dining and expand the dining for, uh, for the guidelines as well, which is going to help a lot to ease some of those fears of coming indoors. So um, with that in mind, we appreciate all the support from all of our customers. Um, we support all of our local businesses here in our Miramar Plaza. Um, and all of our local San Marco area. We're pleased to be part of that equal exchange of information. And thank you very much for coming and for your time. Thank you. Um, just, I want to say something about masks before we move on. So I said last week at a press conference on Thursday at the main library where everybody's required to wear a mask because uh, there's people in close proximity picking up their relief. I'm encouraging people to wear masks uh, when I'm in grocery stores or convenience stores or places shopping that are close. I'm in a mask and I'm, I'm asking my family to do the same. 
Obviously, when you're at a restaurant, someone asked last week, they saw me at a restaurant. If you're at a restaurant that's socially distant, the restaurant's taking precautions, you can't eat with a mask on. So that's a common sense thing. Um, update, in their update this morning, the Florida Department of Health, Health 1,300 cumulative positive cases of COVID-19 in Duval County, 215 hospitalizations and 35 deaths. We've conducted over 38,889 tests in Duval County with a positive percentage of 3.3%. The percentage of positive tests has continued to steadily decline for over a month now, which points to a decreasing prevalence of the virus in our area. This sex success can be directly attributed to the responsible actions and behavior of the people of Jacksonville. And those numbers will continue to improve as we continue our safe and responsible practices in the days ahead. Last Friday, I joined Governor DeSantis here in Jacksonville as he announced his full phase one plan that started today. Included in that announcement, increased restaurant and retail capacity to 50%. The reopening of museums with 50% capacity limits. Gyms and fitness centers can operate at 50% with self-sanitation of machines and surfaces after their use. And elective surgeries can continue with proper personal protective equipment and other protective measures. We're continuing to work through the final steps of our back to work plan for city departments and expect to have more details this week. By Monday, June 1st, I expect most city government offices to be open with safety measures in place. We're bringing some employees back as early as this week and we'll continue that over the coming days. For example, tax collector Jim Overton will be opening another branch location on Thursday this week and another next week by appointment only. Both property appraiser Jerry Holland and supervisor of elections Mike Hogan will be prepared to reopen on June 1st. While our libraries are allowed to reopen under the governor's order, many, as many of you are aware, the mortgage, rent, and utility program is based out of the main library, and many employees are dedicated to providing relief to citizens in need. However, we are looking at curbside pickup and return options beginning May 27th, opening some locations with 50% capacity by June 1st. The library will be announcing those locations soon. Increased testing capacity, as I've said before, is a major component of our COVID strategy moving forward. Here in Jacksonville, our testing capacity already exceeds that of what experts say for a city our size, but we're doing even more. Part of the Federal CARES Act dollars we've received will go towards setting up additional testing locations throughout Jacksonville for a six month period. And we're continuing to work with private businesses and organizations as well. Recently, CVS Pharmacy opened a testing location on Duval Station Road near the airport. Interested citizens can schedule an appointment on CVS.com. Also, the Veterans Administration Outpatient Clinic on Jefferson Street is offering testing for VA patients free of charge. Information on these locations and a map of available testing sites throughout Jacksonville can be found on the Jacksonville, City of Jacksonville website at coj.net backslash COVID-19 testing. With that, I appreciate you letting me join you in this primetime broadcast.